Hi, I'm Chris Clark with Project Leadership. Today I'm going to talk about Azure RMS in Office 365, specifically with SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. So today we're going to be talking about Azure RMS in Office 365, um, specifically with SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. I did put together a previous video where we explain more of the overview of Azure RMS and some of the other use cases. So you can definitely take a look at that. But again, today we're focusing on SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. There are two different variations for Azure RMS. There's Azure RMS for Office 365 and also Azure RMS, which is included with Azure RMS Premium. Within this RMS plan comparison table, we have two versions of RMS. There's RMS for Office 365 and Azure RMS Premium. This is also included in EMS and RMS for Office 365 is included with E3 or above. Uh, if you look at the comparison and the features, in the middle it integrates with Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and OneDrive for Business or Office 365. So both these plans integrate with these workloads. If you look towards the bottom, there are some different features that are included with the premium version versus the one that's included with Office 365. So one of the extra features is integration with file servers and FCI, which is file classification infrastructure. Also, you can track and revoke access to documents. So if you take a look at um, the comparison, if you have Office 365 already, you can really jump into a majority of the features with the RMS, and it makes it very easy to test out in, say, a proof of concept uh, type of environment. So this diagram here shows some of the topology with Office 365, EMS, and Azure RMS. If you look at the very top, you have Windows at Azure Active Directory and Office 365. So Azure Active Directory is really the backend service for Office 365 and all of uh, Microsoft Online services. And you have a directory synchronization mechanism, either uh, Azure AD Connect or uh, Active Directory Federation services or a combination of the two. So ha having the synchronization allows you to have your users be able to log in with their Active Directory credentials and allows more of a single sign-on environment for Azure RMS. There's also some on-premise uh, Azure RMS connectors that are available. We won't be focusing on these because we're focusing on Office 365, but um, FCI was mentioned earlier. Uh, there's also if you have Exchange 2010 and above or SharePoint 2010 and above. So today I want to show Azure RMS and SharePoint Online and what this allows you to do is to protect documents and document libraries uh, upon download and upon them being stored in SharePoint Online. So the key feature here and advantage is that if a user downloads a document, the Azure RMS rights and protection stay with the document. So in this example, we'll be able to show a user downloading the document to their desktop, but then also to say another location that represents a home PC or possibly even a USB device. So very powerful features above and beyond the SharePoint permissions or file permissions that are included in your possible workloads today. But the feature that we're looking at here, again, is Azure RMS and Office 365. This is also included with E3 and above, as I previously mentioned. But one of the first steps in order to using Azure RMS is to activate it on your Office 365 tenant. But if I go into admin centers on the bottom left hand corner, there's going to be SharePoint. So this is the SharePoint Online Admin Center. And where the second piece that we have to do is actually tell SharePoint Online that we want to use Azure RMS. So on the left hand side, we have our menu options and one of those is settings. And when you click in the settings, you can scroll down and there's a information rights management section. Now this is the same as Azure RMS, it just used to be called information rights management and in the SharePoint uh, online and SharePoint on-premises world, it's still called IRM. But what we're doing is we're basically telling SharePoint online that we're going to be using the Azure RMS service 
and essentially refreshing the settings. By enabling the Azure RMS features in the admin portal, I can now protect SharePoint Online document libraries and also OneDrive for Business uh, document libraries as well. So we'll see that next in the upcoming demo. As I'm logged in as a uh, global admin, I'm able to set the settings on the document library. Um, so regular users can't set these settings, so you'd have to use your um, compliance or security policies to come up with the settings that are then um, administrated and enforced by um, your IT department or SharePoint administrators. So as a global admin, I can click on to the library tab at the very top and click on to library settings. And what's new here in library settings under permissions and management in the middle is information rights management. So without me enabling that, this uh, wouldn't be seen. So when I click into information rights management, one option here is that you're actually restricting the library itself. So that's the first checkbox that's there, but there's also show options underneath that. So you're able to create a policy title and a description, and these are shown throughout either Microsoft Office itself SharePoint Online. Um, so we'll see this in a, a later section that these, these policy titles and the descriptions will, will show up in various places. But the key components here are having the ability to one, restrict the document library itself with Azure RMS, but also add some extra features. So if we look at set additional IRM library settings, I have do not allow users to upload documents that do not support IRM. So IRM is only supported with certain types of documents, including Office documents, PDF files, and other various file formats. So this, this makes sure that um, something isn't uploaded and uh, it will not be protected in case it was not a supported file type. The other one is going to be prevent opening documents in the browser. So I want to make sure that the user is authenticated and logged into Microsoft Office in order to open the document and not open it in Office Online. We have other various features here that we can set. By default, if a user can't print, you would need to click this checkbox in order for them to print. There are some other features there as well for um, restricting the amount of days that the document will actually expire. So you can have a document expire after a certain amount of, of days, and essentially it could be a, a self-destruct type of mechanism. You can also have users verify their credentials within a certain interval or a certain number of days. This will make sure that a user has to authenticate to the Azure RMS service in order to access the document. So without being able to authenticate, there's no way they can access the document. So by enabling IRM and Azure RMS on the SharePoint Online document libraries, we've effectively locked down permissions above and beyond SharePoint Online permissions. So before, without Azure RMS, you could only use SharePoint permissions to give access to these documents in the document library. Say you have view rights, or you have edit rights, or you have owner rights. Um, IRM and Azure RMS also use these rights, but then they assign them upon download as well. So the rights stay with the document, which is a very powerful feature that wasn't available with the standard SharePoint permissions. So if I hover over the document, I cannot see a preview of the document. If I click onto the document itself, it can only open in Office software and not Office Online. So you can see the restrictions in action here, and what I have to do is open it in Microsoft Word, being a Word document. So Microsoft Word 2016 is opening up, and the first thing that we're going to see is the IRM policy that we set up. So you can see that it says confidential, internal only, confidential documents, internal use only. So those were the settings that we set up, but above and beyond this, we also set up specific permissions. So if I view permissions in the document, we can see exactly what our permissions are with Azure RMS. So if you look at the following permissions, I can really only view this document. So because my rights in SharePoint Online were read-only access, uh, those also come down with the document once it's opened or downloaded. So again, the key feature here is that the permissions are staying with the document no matter where they are, and they're based on the permissions that you would have had in, in SharePoint 
online already. So again, in this case with view only access, you can see that you have edit, copy, print, save, export, all set to no. Now really the, one of the coolest features here is that you can demonstrate, I can select text and copy is actually grayed out. So complete restrictions throughout the office suite, I can go to file, uh, print, print will be unavailable, save as, export is grayed out. Really, every, all, all the setting permissions that we have are directly shown in Office, and there, there's no way to even take a screenshot of this document as well. So if I use the standard snipping tool and, and try and take a screenshot, it's not going to allow me um, because this is also one of the features of Azure RMS. So if I click on New here, the screen itself is grayed out, and then when I actually do take a screenshot, it's completely black. So. Again, Windows itself is designed to understand Azure RMS, and also the Office 2016 software is designed to uh, understand our Azure RMS in this way. So if I wanted to take this document and actually download it instead to see um, what I would see once it's on my desktop versus being in SharePoint Online, I can close the document and click on the menu button and go into uh, the download area and I'm going to download that same document to my desktop here. So I'm going to save it to the desktop and once I open it we'll see pretty much the exact same things that we saw in the uh, previous demonstration showing Word 2016 with the confidential internal only. We can also view the permissions and we can see it has the same permissions as well. So the real power becomes uh, when I want to download this to uh, another source. So I'm going to use the local PC to represent, say, a home PC or USB drive or really just another location. So what we've shown here is how Azure RMS protection works on Karen's PC itself, but what happens when we take this file and download it to, say, a home PC or a USB drive example that we mentioned before. So as you can see, once the file is open, the, the user on the home PC, or in this example, the local desktop, doesn't have rights to this document. So this really proves that the permissions of Azure RMS stay with the document. So it's a very powerful feature above and beyond what you might have with, say, email encryption or even um, using regular file permissions. So now we've seen Azure RMS uh, in action with SharePoint Online, but we can also use the same feature set and really the same options that we had with the SharePoint Online document libraries with OneDrive for Business and users' personal OneDrives. So within the portal here, if I click on the app launcher, I can go into the OneDrive for Business icon. And once I'm in here, uh, Microsoft just recently redid the interface for OneDrive, so it's a little difficult to find if you were just to search for it straight out, but the way to get to the site content settings where we want to enable IRM, you have to go into the uh, settings wheel in the upper right here, and you see it says site settings, but it doesn't say site contents anymore. So if I search for site content, it does show up. So hopefully Microsoft will just include that later on, but this is the quickest way to get to it at the moment. Once I click on site contents, we're going to see very similar to um, the SharePoint Online type of site content screen um, as administrator, if you've seen this before, but there, the general OneDrive personal library is under documents. So if I click on documents, there's also a, a sub menu here to click more for information. And once I click on that, there's a settings that comes up. So under settings, there's permissions and management area where we saw we had the IRM settings under SharePoint Online. We have the same settings now in OneDrive. So if I click on information rights management, I'm able to restrict permissions to the entire OneDrive library for Karen. So by setting these information rights or Azure RMS rights on personal OneDrive, we're able to get the same capabilities that we saw before uh, upon having permission stay with the document upon download. So if I were to download the document from the user's OneDrive and say they put it on a USB drive and that USB drive was lost, there's no way anyone could open the document without being able to authenticate to the Azure RMS service.
Thank you for joining me on this topic with Azure RMS and SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. I'm Chris Clark with Project Leadership Associates. You can reach me at cclark at projectleadership.net.